Ms. Legalista here. Thank you for joining the video. Back to talk about the surrogacy escrow account. I don't know what I want to call it. I'm going to call it a scheme. I'm going to call it a scheme. We'll go from there. I've talked a lot about the owner. I want to now switch gears because I think it's important to hear from the people who actually had to deal with what happened. And these would be the intended families, the people who were waiting for these babies to be born and who were paying money into this escrow account only to now find out that millions of dollars are gone because the owner was you know, trying to do some other things with her life, start a music career, a fashion clothing line or something like that. And I took a look at those. There were a couple of things I actually liked. Let's go ahead and pull this up so that you can see this. Again, we're going to be focusing on their story, what they said happened, what they were trying to do, because I think sometimes we can get caught up into the salaciousness of everything that's being talked about in terms of, yes, they're investigating this. Yes, the FBI is involved. But really and truly, it's about those families. It's about the people who lost out. Kristen Smith and Gregory Smith. And this is coming out of Harris County, Texas. Harris County, Texas. You can see the names of the different defendants here. It was actually SEAM, which is Surrogacy Escrow Account Management, doing business as SEAM LLC. Then you had Dominique Side, who is the owner. And then you have some various names there for her. And then you also have a couple of her other companies, Vegan Bay, FBA, LLC. Okay, okay, you see all those. I don't need to go through that. All right, so then we have, this is the original petition. And then they had also filed for an injunction. And if you've been following this, then you know that the accounts were frozen. All of the financial accounts have been frozen for those defendants because they wanted to make sure that those assets were protected and that they didn't continue to get diluted, transferred, paid out to somebody else because yes, there had been property transfers. Yes, some of this money had been transferred to other people. So they were concerned. All right, so we have, and we are, I'm really not interested in this part. I really wanna get down to the intended parents. Here are the parties. So let's talk a little bit about the parties here. So we'll know all of the people who are involved. Plaintiff Kristen Smith, Mrs. Smith, is an individual living in Denton County, Texas. She may be served process by serving the undersigned counsel. Then you have Gregory Smith, also an individual living in Denton County, Texas. Mr. and Mrs. Smith are married and herein collectively referred to as plaintiffs or the Smiths. So these are going to be the people who were, you know, trying to start their family. OK, then you have defendant surrogacy escrow account management LLC doing business as a SEAM LLC. It's a member managed liability company operating out of Texas. Dominique side is the registered agent. You see all of that information there. Then you have defendant Dominique side herself. That's totally separate from the LLC, from the business. And you see the names listed there. She is uh, in Brazoria County, Texas. I'm not even familiar with it. Now, these are some of her companies here. This is Vegan Bay FBA LLC, a limited liability company operating out of Texas. And then we have Vegan Bay Properties LLC doing business as Crestline Property Investments LLC. Then we have defendant Life Escrow, a limited liability company. And... Uh, Yes, out of Harris County. Then we have defendant Anthony Hall. This is supposed to be her business partner who was working with her on the music side. But there have been some transfers there, too. So part of this is going to be following the money trail, where this money went. If you go back and look at the injunction, I lay all of that down when they talk about, hey, he received X amount of dollars but it does not look like he performed services for SEAM. He may have performed some services for Dominique. That's something to think about, but that injunction says that it does not look like he performed any services for SEAM or this or the, the parents here, the surrogates, these other people who were supposed to be able to say, okay, yes, the services were performed. Yes, pay that party. All right, and then based on public filings, information and belief, defendant side and defendant hall are both members of Vegan Bay LLC. Defendant Vegan Bay FBA LLC, defendant Crestline, defendant 
Okay, they're all together, life escrow, and you're gonna hear some of this. They actually hired someone to come in and take a look at where the money went. They even looked at Dominique Side's tax filings. Y'all, it was all very interesting. Okay, so this is where we wanna go. This is where we wanna go with this, the facts. And it starts off with this really, really, really important line. You guys can tell me whether or not you think I'm wrong here, but I think that this line is probably one of the most important lines in this lawsuit. And it is italicized and it is in bold. And you know that most of the time you don't do double up, right? You've got double emphasis here, okay? Plaintiffs are intended parents seeking to grow their family via a gestational surrogate period. Okay. That tells you what this is all coming from, where this is coming from. All right. Let's start and check out what is in the facts here. At its root, this lawsuit concerns ordinary business disputes, breaches of contract, breaches of fiduciary duty, fraud, and negligence. However, the harms to plaintiffs, both realized and imminently threatened concerned one of the most intimate aspects of the human experience, the birth of children and the formation of family. See how important they started out that out with? Plaintiffs Kristen and Gregory Smith are a married couple living in Denton County, Texas. In 2020, the Smiths set out on a journey to have their first child. Unfortunately, despite nearly two years of invasive medical appointments, hormonal cocktails, and in vitro fertilization attempts, the Smiths were unable to conceive on their own. The Smiths then determined that their best option for starting their family was to seek the services of a gestational surrogate. Okay, so at this point, you are now able to hear their story. Like, this is a plight. Like, listen to all these things that they've had to endure. They've gone through appointments taking all kinds of hormones in vitro and decided this was the path they were going to have to go through. Okay. In 2022, the Smiths engaged at the services of Shared Conception, a surrogacy agency. In turn, Shared Conception required that the Smiths use an escrow agency to manage and facilitate the transfers of funds between the Smiths and their gestational surrogate. Shared Conception provided the Smiths with a list of recommended escrow agents, which included defendant scene. Now, when I talked about the injunction before, one of the things that I talked about was, hey, how were these people making their way to scene? Because if you go on the website, now granted the website's changed now, some things have been taken down, but if you were to go on the website, it looks very business oriented. It doesn't ring true as, hey, here's this person leading this right now, okay? And so it makes you wonder whether there's a referral line there, someone who's sending people to her, because it, yeah, that's just the way it looks to me, okay? Just the way it looks to me. And now we know who this other party was. It was Shared Conception that was providing this list of recommended escrow agents. And look, I, you know, as an attorney, I've been on referral lists before, recommended lists before. So this is nothing new. There's nothing inherently wrong with being on a referral list. The hope, though, I think that people have, and I'm not surprised that shared conceptions, that they didn't go after them. I'm not so surprised with that. But the feeling that people have when they get these referral lists sometimes is they're thinking that you've vetted them already. They're thinking that you've made them answer some questions about this questionnaire, get it back to us, provide references, provide insurance, provide information on how long you've been in business. And then they say, hey, guess what? You can now join our referral list. And that's the way a lot of companies work. That's the way a lot of legal referral services work. Hey. Some are just directories. We'll put you on our list. Other ones are, no, here's the application. Here are the requirements you have to meet. And then, yeah, we might need to also have a follow-up call with you. And then here are the documents that we need to, to, to go over. Yeah, you have to jump through hoops. 
Don't know what happened here, though. Don't know what happened. Would like to, to find out more about shared conceptions. It says, based on shared conceptions recommendations, see, like they, they said, hey, we got the list. We're going to go with who they're recommending. The Smiths engaged Seam to serve as the escrow account manager and agent for their first surrogacy journey. Ah, first surrogacy journey. So they don't really know how this works. This is the first time they're doing this. Remember, they've been jumping through all those other hoops. The Smiths' first surrogacy journey happily resulted in the birth of their son in June 2023. And they reported no issues in dealing with Seam during that first journey. My, how things change in a year. Think about that. Here we are, June 2024, now July 2024, just a year later. That's not really that much time. And so their first time, you know, they're like, hey, we got our recommended list. We're working with shared conceptions. They've said, here's a list you can take a look at. And everything goes fine. It says plaintiffs contracted with seem to manage escrow for the second gestational agreement. Eventually, the Smiths decided they were ready to grow their family and begin their second surrogacy journey, again, utilizing the escrow services of seem to oversee the transfer of funds between the Smiths and their gestational surrogate. Nothing out of the ordinary. You've had this experience with them before and everything looks good. And usually, if you've had a good experience with somebody, then you just go back to them, right? Why start over with somebody and then have to wonder whether or not they're going to be able to do what you need them to do? No, they're just like, we're just going to use them again because they worked out fine the first time. At all relevant times, defendants seem inside individually and collectively warranted and represented that one, Seam was a credible functioning escrow account management company, and that two, that the funds it held in escrow were insured. Seam also made representations concerning its insurance policies on its website. Now, remember what I just said about these referral companies. Plenty of them will say, hey, I need you to send over your declarations page so that we can make sure you have insurance coverage in this amount, for any single instance, and then this amount for aggregate. And we, we want to see that, send that over to us. Says here, they were saying they were insured. So this, look at what's on their website here. It says frequently asked questions. Are funds held by your company insured? Is your company bonded? And then they have $1 million per incident. $1 million per incident. Yeah. All funds are further insured to the FDIC limit of 250000 Then they've got frequency asked questions up there, and then they have the link. Now, it's my belief, I could be entirely wrong, but if you click on that link for now, I'm not sure it's going anywhere, but it says last visited June 25th, 2024. Well, let me see if I can pop over there right now to see if that comes up. So I'm going to go to the same website. And I actually have to put on my glasses to be able to do that. So I can actually see what I'm putting in up here. Seam.com. And what's the rest? Oh, surrogacy account. Look, I've got it all wrong. Surrogacy account. Dot com with the FAQs. With the FAQs. All right, let's see if something comes up. So I will tell you right now, this is not on their page. I'm look, I just looked at it. It is not on the page. So that FAQ page, I don't know. It's gone. All right, paragraph 24. Let's take a look at that. On December 19th, 2023, the Smiths, their gestational surrogate, and Seam entered into a certain escrow account agreement with defendant Seam. The agreement provides as follows. The plaintiffs, their gestational surrogate, and Seam had a meeting of the minds as to the scope and purpose. And you can see here what that was. The intended parties now wish to retain SEAM to review the, the gestational agreement, hold the funds that may be necessary to meet the financial obligations of the gestational agreement. Yes, funds will be dispersed in accordance with the agreed upon schedule. All right. And this is that SEAM would fulfill its obligations on the agreement, including properly managing the funds in escrow and timely notifying plaintiffs and their gestational surrogate in the event that funds in the account became low. And so you can see that part here. This is part of the account and user agreement here. 
It says account holder will notify the intended parents and the gestational carrier by email when the account has a balance of under $5,000, which is the minimum of the gestational agreement. And also look at this when all deposited funds have been dispersed. All right. The funds held in escrow were insured. That's that piece there, FDIC. And in the event an issue arose that the parties to the agreement would have recourse against SEAM by filing a claim against SEAM's insurance and bond policies. Then it says, beginning in June 2024, plaintiffs learn of defendants' breach of the escrow agreements. In early June 2024, the Smiths were contacted by their gestational surrogate, who informed them that there were troubling discussions occurring online in Facebook groups dedicated to intended parents and gestational surrogates. The collective rumor was that SEAM had frozen its financial accounts and that surrogates were no longer receiving payments. All right, let's stop here for a second because this is a new development. We knew that there was some conversation about the account being frozen, but now we have this whole Facebook group, which I will definitely need to take a look at, dedicated to intended parents and gestational surrogates. And that's where this information started to really percolate. Based on information and belief, on June 3rd, 2024, defendants notified Shared Conception that SEAM had allegedly suffered suspicious, unauthorized transactions on their accounts which resulted in holds on all transactions, but that new accounts were being established. So let's make sure we understand this. If you're an older account, your funds are frozen and there may be some transfers going on that are unauthorized, but if you're new, we're still just gonna take your money on in. And the question is, what seem having a conversation with these new intended parents and surrogates about what was going on with the old intended parents and surrogates. I somehow doubt that. I doubt that. It says defendants promised new accounts would be set up and that all automated clearinghouse payments would resume within a few days. She's like, oh, well, for you, for, for the old ones, we're going to set you up with some new accounts. It says, based on information and belief, on June 11, 2024, defendants reported to shared conception, one, that said new financial accounts had been established. Okay, I'm feeling like some good faith effort here. Two, that all ACH payments were in the process of being restored. Okay. And three, the defendants were just waiting for Seams Bank, Capital One, to provide a report that showed which scheduled payments did not go through so that defendants could update account statements and resume payments. Now, the question with some of this is, where did one, two, and three come from? If it's just seen telling you this, I don't know. If there's information coming from the bank and seen together, we're working on it, then I would feel a little bit more comfortable like, okay, okay, this feels right, this feels right, maybe. However, based on information and belief, the payments to surrogates had never resumed. Oh, and that's when things fall apart. On June 14th, 2024, the Smiths received the following email from SEAM. This is what we read about in the injunction, which I talked about in some of the other videos. It says, due to legal action, I regret to inform you that all operations have been placed on hold. At this time, I'm unable to provide further details regarding this matter. I want to emphasize that our staff members have not been implicated in any wrongdoing and continue to uphold the highest standards of professionalism and integrity as they move on to other roles. We appreciate your understanding and patience as we navigate this situation. Sincerely, Dominique Side, owner of SEAM LLC. Now, there are a number of issues with this. First being, I regret to inform you that all operations have been placed on hold. What exactly does that mean? If you're an intended parent or a surrogate, you have to look at that and wonder, okay, so wait, what does, if you're the surrogate, you're going, well, where, where is my money? When is my money coming? If you're the intended parent, you're going, well, what about my money? You're basically telling me you're shutting down, but you're giving me no information about my money. How do you think that's going to go over? It's not, it's not. 
at this time I'm unable to provide further details. What do you mean you're unable to? How about you're just not providing further details is more of what it sounds like. I want to emphasize that other staff members have not been implicated. Okay. All right. Well, who are those other staff members? Because supposedly the FBI is doing an investigation. Those staff members are probably going to be questioned. Everybody's going to be questioned here. We appreciate your understanding and patience. I cannot imagine that these people have any understanding or patience related to this. I cannot. I saw the numbers. It is in the tens of thousands of dollars for some of these people. I would not be understanding and I would not be patient, but that would be me. I would have a lot of questions and I would want a lot of answers. The Smiths became very concerned that their gestational surrogate, who was at the time only a few weeks pregnant with the Smiths' second child, had not received the escrow payment for June 24 to cover expenses associated with her medical care. Defendant C maintains an online portal for intended parents and gestational surrogates to view their escrow account balance and the account's transfer activity. The portal reported that the Smith's gestational surrogate had received the June 2024 transfer as required. However, when the Smiths contacted their surrogate directly, they learned that she had never received this purported payment. Okay, so now we have somebody cooking the books. The books say one thing, but when you call the person and ask the person, the person says, no, I didn't get that money. I did not get that money. To date, the Smiths have deposited approximately $70,000 into their escrow account with C, roughly $50,000 of which should still be in the account and readily available to make transfer to the Smiths gestational surrogate. Next up, defendant's conduct has created a reasonable fear of imminent irreparable harm to plaintiffs. Defendants Seam and Side have not communicated with the Smiths since the June 14, 2024 email. Imagine just getting that email and going, well, where is my money? Based on the foregoing, the Smiths have filed a complaint against Seam and Side with the Office of the Texas Attorney General, which was confirmed as received on June 17, 2024. Based on information and belief, Seam and Side have refused to communicate with the surrogacy agencies, intended parents, and gestational surrogates affected by Seam and Side's failure to properly perform their obligations as an escrow agent and escrow account management company. Based on public filings, information and belief, defendants are currently defendants in multiple breach of contract and collections lawsuits brought against them by unpaid creditors. Based, upon, based on information and belief, defendants are currently under investigation by local, state, and federal authorities for concerns of criminal activity. Based on information and belief, defendants have misappropriated, fraudulently transferred, or otherwise materially damaged the funds entrusted to them as escrow agents and fiduciaries by the Smiths. In light of these above facts, the Smiths as plaintiffs bring this lawsuit against defendants and simultaneously, urgently ask the court to prevent defendants from further misappropriating or otherwise disposing of the escrow funds plaintiffs entrusted to defendants as detailed herein below. So they had this temporary restraining order and application for a temporary injunction. So this next part is where they talk about alter ego and vicarious liability. And really and truly the LLC is supposed to be separate from the person. And what they're going to be alleging there is that that was not maintained. And she started dipping into that as if they were the same. And it was just her own little pocketbook that she could just spend as she wanted to. Then you have fraudulent conveyances here. Let's look a little bit more about this. Based on information beliefs, Seam conveyed or transferred ownership and control of its assets to Side Hall and other named defendants and their transferees. The property wrongly transferred may be described as personal property that is subject to ownership in accordance with the Texas Business and Commerce Code. The agreement acknowledges that the funds entrusted to seem are to only be distributed to the surrogate or if funds remain in the escrow account after the surrogacy is completed to the plaintiffs. Right. You're done. Didn't spend all the money. We get it back. 
Seen knew it did not own the funds entrusted to it and knew it was not permitted to transfer these funds or any interest in the same to any other individual or entity not expressly described in the agreement. Plaintiffs are creditors of Seen because they have valid and subsisting claims against Seen due to their ownership of escrow funds that have not yet been dispersed to the surrogate and for Seen's fraudulent acts and breach of its fiduciary duties, which have yet to be satisfied. It says Seen sought to delay, hinder, and defraud plaintiffs by the transfer of assets before or within a reasonable time after their claims arose. Seen transferred ownership and control of the escrow funds to its transferees, including, but not limited to, Side, Hall, and other defendants with the intent to relieve Seam of any assets that would be used to satisfy plaintiff's claims. So you see what they're saying here is Seam and Dominique Side, Dominique Side really running the show here, sought to say, hey, I'm just going to transfer any property that I have out. I'm going to pay out funds over here to these other parties. That way, when my creditors come after me, there's nothing for them to take because it's already been transferred out. But here's the thing, you know, you can go after the money. You can go, if these people were not supposed to get this and these are fraudulent transfers, you can go back and claw that back. You can go back and say, court, we want that back. That other party has been unjustly enriched. This whole thing was fraud. Never should have happened. Never should have happened. All right. So then we have just a breach of contract. Hey, we hired you to do something and you just didn't do it. Breach of fiduciary duty. You were supposed to be looking out for us. And you didn't. Instead, you looked out for yourself. Then we have fraudulent misrepresentation. Look at this. It says, specifically, seem inside individually or collectively represented to plaintiffs. And they're calling this multiple. Look at this up here. Multiple fraudulent misrepresentations. I really need to work on the highlighting, right? Let's see. Multiple. Oh, yes. Look, I still need to go back and... We're going to say multiple. We're going to highlight these. Yes. Multiple fraudulent misrepresentations to plaintiffs. Specifically, okay, here we have that seem and side already possess the experience, skill, skills, qualifications, and resources necessary to establish and operate an escrow account management company. I mean, it sounds like she did, right? Because the first surrogacy went through with no issues no issues. And so the Smiths came back for a second round, right? The seamen side would in good faith perform the obligations required of them by the agreement. Now that's where we start to get questionable. The first time around seemed good. It's the second time that seamen side would in good faith fulfill their legal and fiduciary obligations to plaintiffs and plaintiffs gestational surrogate, collectively the defendant's representations. And it says it was material. These were false statements of fact because seem new or should have known. And then they're asking for also one for fraudulent inducement. You fraudulently induced us to enter into these agreements. You guys, the, the counts just go on and on. Count six, fraud by non-disclosure. You didn't tell us some things. You committed fraud because you kept those things to yourself when you knew, had we known about them, we never would have hired you, never would have entered into an agreement with you. Negligent misrepresentation. Seven counts. We're at seven counts now. Then we have negligent undertaking. You should not have undertaken this. Then we have the temporary restraining order. And I went over the order itself. I'm not going to go over that here in detail. There was a lot there. The thing we need to be concerned about is no, is that the accounts were frozen. Everything is frozen. Everything is frozen. We've got some other information here. Let's get to this prayer for relief. What do they want? What do they want? After all this, what do they want? Other than the accounts being frozen right now, what do they want? Well, I'm sure for one thing, they would like specific performance, which would be have the parties perform so that the surrogate gets paid and the baby gets born and, you know, the baby's theirs. But in this case, that's probably not going to happen given what's going on. So let's see what they are asking for. For these reasons, plaintiffs Kristen Smith and Gregory Smith request A, that defendants be cited to appear and answer. B, 
that plain, the court grant plaintiff's application for temporary restraining order. We saw that that did take hit, that did take place. C, that following a hearing on the merits, the court grant plaintiff's application for a temporary injunction. Oh, that was the injunction, sorry. D, that following a trial on the merits, the court award a judgment in favor of plaintiffs and against the defendants for the following. Actual damages, mm -hmm, the harm that you caused, exemplary damages, pre-judgment and post-judgment interest, court costs, attorney fees, and all other legal and equitable relief to which plaintiffs are justly entitled. And then here you have the firm that is representing the plaintiffs. And then the affidavit of um, Kristen Smith. So that's it. Um, you may have one for him too, affidavit of Gregory Smith. Yep. That's it. That's, that's what they've said. They have basically said, hey, look, we hired her to do these services before everything went fine. We thought we'd come back this year. And then we started seeing stuff on Facebook. I tell you, Facebook will tell on everybody. <laughs> it will tell on everybody. Okay. This is really sad. This is not a good thing. Um, please don't take my you know, laughter or joking here as me not understanding that this is a serious matter because this is a very serious matter. This is a very serious matter for all who are involved. But hopefully this brings us up to speed. In another video, I think I'll talk a little bit more about, again, about vetting people that you're going to be working with. In this case, remember, uh, shared conception, <laughs> the company that was doing the referrals, you know, so there was a referral company in place. Uh, Dominique said that they had insurance and were bonded and all of these things, made all of these representations. And companies can do that all the time. It does not mean that they will not fall apart and that things will happen that will cause you to have to file a lawsuit against them. Yep, can definitely happen. We'll keep our eye on this, see how things go. I have some other plaintiffs that we're going to be looking at to hear their stories. At least now we know what happened with this one. But if this brings you up to speed with some of what's going on with this case and helps you understand what to be thinking about and what to be looking out for, then please go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace.